everyone. Today, we will begin part two of our topic, States of Matter. Our objectives for today are to understand the concept behind heating and cooling curves and how it relates to change of states. So if you can recall, there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. All right, so as we add energy to a solid, those particles vibrate and they move more and more until they become a liquid. If we continue adding energy to that, it's going to boil and form a gas. Now, if a solid such as ice is heated, it's going to melt and eventually boil. If the temperature is taken at regular intervals, then a heating curve will be obtained. Similarly, if a gas is cooled until it turns into a solid, then a cooling curve is obtained. So this is one example of the setup of a heating curve of water. So after about 20 or 30 minutes after heating ice, we can plot a graph of temperature versus time. This should be time in minutes. And we will end up with a graph looking something like this, this red line here. So let's go through each point in this graph. At point A, we have our solid, which is ice. At point A, the temperature is below zero degrees and time is zero, right? So once we start heating, we're going to start timing. Once we start heating, the temperature of the solid will begin to heat up. So increasing the heat energy increases the vibrations of the particles in the ice. So the temperature will increase. In this point here, from point B to point C, we have melting taking place. Now if you notice here, the temperature is steady. Why is the temperature steady from point B to C? It's zero and it's taking place for quite a few minutes. Right, so in BC, the forces of attraction between the particles are so weak so that the particles slide over each other. The temperature here is constant because the energy is going to overcome the forces between particles instead of raising the temperature. So this is why at this point here, the substance will melt. It's using that energy to overcome forces of attraction rather than sending up the temperature. Once the forces of attraction have been uh, overcome, um, then we go to point C to point D. So at this point here, we have water. Point C is where the solid becomes liquid completely. From point C to D, the water is being heated as a liquid. So increasing the energy is going to increase the movement of the particles in the liquid. Remember, in the liquid state, it's vibrating and sliding over each other. That vibration and that sliding over each other is going to become a little more, uh, it's going to increase a little bit as we heat it and as we add energy to the system. At point D, this is where it begins to boil. This is at 100 degrees Celsius. So from D to E, we have another constant temperature at 100. It's at 100 for quite a few minutes. All right. So at point at D, E, the forces of attraction between the particles, they begin to get a little bit weak so that the particles begin to break free of each other. The temperature is constant because energy is being used to overcome the forces of attraction between the particles. And as a result, the substance begins to boil. So from D to E, we have vaporization, or you can also say we have boiling taking place. Then from E to F, 
we are increasing the energy again and this will increase the speed of the gas molecules and then the temperature also begins to increase. So the gas is going to become even hotter. Now from this heating curve, we can deduce the melting point and the boiling point. The melting point and the boiling point occur where the graph has a plateau. Um, you can also say it's where the graph levels off. All right, so wherever the graph is level, right, the very first point will be its melting point. So you can extrapolate the melting point from the graph, which is this black line here. The melting point is zero. And this plateau here, we're going to extrapolate that point. So the melting point, the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Similarly, if we start with um, steam, right, uh, the gas can be cooled to form a cooling curve. So when the gas is cooled, the particles are going to lose kinetic energy and the temperature will begin to fall with time. The particles start to get more attracted to each other and then at this point here, energy is released and it turns into a liquid. So at this point here is where we have condensation taking place. When condensation takes place, you have the liquid being formed and then when it continues cooling, the particles are going to lose even more energy, right? And then it turns into a solid. So at this point here is where we have our freezing point. So at this point here, the energy is released and liquid turns into a solid. Now, heating and cooling curves can tell you whether or not a substance is pure or impure. So say, for example, this heating curve here, you see how the lines are straight? That tells you it's a pure substance. That is because the melting point and boiling points are constant. In an impure substance, the melting point here and the boiling points here, they are variable. So they, it's, it's going to give you a, a very funny looking curve, just a wiggly looking line. And that's how you know it's an impure substance. One of the labs we usually do is a cooling curve of stearic acid. Um, we may be able to do it next term. So this was a sample graph from a student who did the experiment, right? So if you look here, this, is, this graph has exactly what we need. So both axes are labeled. So the y-axis is temperature versus, sorry, temperature in degrees Celsius versus time in minutes, right? Every single point has been plotted correctly. You see how you have little X's there? You can either draw an X or you can draw a dot with a circle around it to represent each point, right? There is a title, there's a scale, right? So this scale here, it's one centimeter representing one unit. So one centimeter on the graph represents one minute. For the scale for um, the y-axis now, 2 centimeters represents 10 degrees Celsius or 10 units, right? Um, the next thing is how the line is drawn. So this is a line of best fit. This is how we typically draw a cooling curve. So you draw a smooth curve first, then a straight line as it levels off and then a smooth curve going back down, right? Using this now where the graph has a plateau, you extrapolate that point and you can deduce the freezing point of this substance, which is steric acid, right? So I will be uploading a little worksheet for you to do. You can use this video as a guide to help you and you can always talk to each other or you can message me for help. All right, so look out for the worksheet. I will be uploading it together with this video.
All right, so that's it for today. Take care. Bye.